Good morning, Alan. How are you going? Well, thank you. I was in Hong Kong over the weekend recording some footage for uh, Hugh Lunn. Uh, of Huey Lunn? Yep. My mate Huey uh, Lunn. Go on. Well, you know, as you... So welcome right. back to the second in this uh, Hong Kong series. And in the last YouTube, uh, I promised that we were going to talk a little bit about the beautiful portrait behind Hugh. And this time around, we've actually got Hugh's books uh, on display. Oh. Uh, yes. Both spies like us. <laughs> and the props are important because... Uh, it's the history in those books that really led to me going to Hong Kong and wanting to do this series as I recuperated um, from uh, a hernia operation. So... Uh, in the midst of the demonstrations. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so, Hugh, tell us a little bit. Who was the artist that did the work? And just tell us a, a little bit about the, uh, about the, uh, the painting. Yeah, well, the artist's name was a Brisbane bloke called Simmons, S-I-M-M-O-N-S, -S, and uh, there's, a, there's a prize in Australia, a very rich prize for the best portrait of someone in the arts, and because I wrote books, I'm in the arts. So he asked me, could he do a painting of me? It, it's, it has to be a portrait for the Archibald. And uh, so he, he painted that painting, and to win the Archibald, there has to be more than just capturing the person like a photo. So he has the words of the first paragraph of my book about my childhood in Brisbane, which begins, I didn't know much about the world when I was nine, but I knew you didn't get Russians called James. And he's got... Uh, and he's got the ending, the last paragraph of the book, where I was kissing my relative girlfriend and her mother caught us and I said, the world was rapidly catching up with us. So he's tried to capture the book in the painting and one of the main characters in my book is my mother, Olive. And if you look on the right of the painting, you can see that behind me, is this woman with long hair, which my mother had, and, and her eyes, which look a bit like mine, and she's looking over me or telling the story or I'm telling the story about her. Um, unfortunately, it didn't win the prize, but it... it it's an exquisite it, it, portrait, nevertheless. It is a wonderful... So let's go back to the little narrative that we were talking about, about how... Um, Ken decided to take up the challenge of uh, getting a Hong Kong resident into Wimbledon. How did that go? Well, as with a lot of Kenny Fletcher's schemes, it didn't go that well. Um, Ken took Jerry with him uh, to a few places to play tournaments and they played doubles together. and. Finally, they arrived at Wimbledon, and in those days, now it's done by computer on where you ranked. But then you had to fill in a form who you've beaten in the last 12 months. And Jerry and Ken had one good victory over a New Zealander and a British player, and that was the only thing they could write on their form. And so you got to remember that every good tennis player in the world arrives in Wimbledon. Most of them don't get in, so they have to play qualifying at Roehampton, which is the toughest tournament in the world where people kick and scream and fight to win. And Fletch was a current Wimbledon finalist, and he later won the double, Wimbledon doubles finalist. He later won the doubles, he and John Newcomb. And he said, he put in the entry for him and Jerry Song and Wimbledon rejected them and said they had to play qualifying. And Fletch rang me up at Reuters where I was working and he said, Captain Gibson ran the tournament. He said, ring up this guy Gibson and tell him that you're a champion Australian, you're a reporter and you're a champion Australian, uh, Australian doubles player. 
has been rejected and put in qualifying. And so I thought, well, it's a good story. So I rang up Captain Gibson and he said, oh, Mr. Lund, you know, they're, they're not up to it. They're not good enough and uh, da 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 da. And anyway, if they are, if they play qualifying, they'll get in because they hold something like eight positions uh, for the qualifying winners, the first eight. And I rang up Fletch and I said, no, it looks like you'll have to play qualifying. And he said, I'm going to play qualifying. And I said, well, if you want to get in and get the Rolls Royce, you better play qualifying. And Ken said, no, we'd never get through. The boy isn't good enough. So he didn't play. And then that was when jo John Newcomb's partner, Tony Roach, fell over and injured his ankle. And Newcomb didn't have a partner. So he and Fletch played as a scratch pair and won Wimbledon. Ah, uh -huh. now that's a good story. So we might uh, just conclude on on that part for this, and in the next one we'll get back to uh, to uh, to the Hong Kong narrative because yes. it's. Uh, in the here from Brisbane Tennis Trial YouTube channel, uh, and I'm up in Blackbutt as you probably have realised already. And this road is always noisy, but we'll power on. I'm at the Bunyanak Cafe and I'm here with Evelyn and this little message here is for you, Hugh Lund. Hi Hugh, remember me? I loved it when you came up to visit and look, just like to say a big thank you to you and wish you all the best. Thank you.